O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. That's Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. The title of my message this morning is Please Hold the Line. Please hold the line. So somebody put that in the comments. Someone put that in the chat and just say, please hold the line. Please hold the line. In the scripture that we've just read, we know very little about Habakkuk in terms of his upbringing, his history, his background, his birth or family. However, we do get an indication that he was what one would refer to as a professional prophet in that he had been schooled in the law of Moses. However, what I do like about Habakkuk is the ability to identify with him as a believer today. His ability to keep it real and to ask the questions many of us ask or have asked and that he shared the same thoughts that many of us often share today but do not speak about. For example, in that scripture we just read, Habakkuk asks how long will he have to cry and God not hear? Is there anyone that will wave their hands this morning on the screen and be honest and say, I've actually cried out to God at times and felt like he hasn't or didn't hear me? This was the case with Habakkuk. He says, why do you, being God, show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? Have you ever asked God, why is it that if you are on the throne, there is so much trouble going on in our world? Has anyone asked that question before? Why would you allow such evil to prevail in certain circumstances, especially with everything that we see going on in our world today? Whether that's injustice, whether it's death, whether it's terrorism, floods and more. Well, if you've asked that question, Habakkuk, did the same thing. He then goes on to ask about his own life. Have you ever questioned God about the things pertaining to your own life? Questions such as, why is it that I give, but yet stingy people of the world seem to prosper and I don't? Why is it that I pray for children and I do not have any? Why is it that people fornicate and I don't? People are adulterers, yet I'm faithful, but yet they seem to get their happily ever after. And I'm keeping myself trying to do what's right. And you will not provide bay. You will not provide a spouse. You will not provide a way out of this temptation for me. Can anyone be real this morning? Just wave. Don't worry. The person on your left and right can't see you in the screen. So you can just wave. Why is it, Lord, that I don't do fraud? I don't change the figures. I don't adjust the facts. I stay integral, yet I do not get favor and the wicked seem to prosper. Why is it that I fast and pray for change in my life, change in the life of my family, and yet there is no change? Why, why, why? Habakkuk, like many of us at times, if not at this time, had questions for God. And when God actually replies him, he tells him in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5, that what he is going to do, you wouldn't actually believe him. That's what God tells Habakkuk. But Habakkuk, still being like us, still questions God further. He says, listen, God, I don't need to know everything that's going on, but just tell me a little something. Have you ever been there in that place in life where it's like, God, I don't need to know the whole picture, but just give me a little inkling, a little something, something. Maybe someone told you this is what God is going to do in your life. And you thought, that's great, but how about God just tell me himself? I will never forget uh, several years ago, I think it was maybe six or seven years ago before we started church at the Cornerstone Church, I remember going to visit another church at that time. And some of you may have heard me share this story before. And I just went to visit them for a service and I was eager for a word from God. I was in a relationship at that time that I wasn't sure if this was God's will or not. Should it work? Should it not work? Should we stay together? And I wanted 
answers. And I went to this church and I was sitting in service. I was eager for a word. The sermon went by and it wasn't relevant to me. Don't you just get frustrated when you go to church looking for a certain word for you. You're looking for a particular word and pastor's talking about studying the Bible and you're like, I know how to study my Bible. Give me the word. I went to this church and I was waiting. The sermon went by, no word. And so at the end of the sermon, they said, if you would like prayer, come up for prayer. And so I thought, you know what? There's no amount of prayer that's too much. So I went up for prayer. And you know, when you're younger, sometimes you want certain people to pray for you because you feel like they're more anointed. So you try to pretend like you didn't see that that person was free. You know what I'm talking about. And you wait for certain people. And so I did that and I went straight to the main pastor and he prayed for me. And then at the end of his prayer, he said, I have a word from God for you. I was like, praise Jesus. It's about time. And then he said one word to me preparation what the preparation preparation for what what are you talking about i just told you in my mind without you hearing me god that i need answers and you're telling me preparation preparation for what what has this got to do with what is going on in my life and of course in hindsight i didn't realize that the word preparation that the pastor gave me was actually in preparation for ministry and the cornerstone church but it wasn't relevant to my situation at that time and i was frustrated because i wanted answers and this is exactly the situation that habakkuk was in if you read the book of habakkuk and you read habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 he actually says okay god i don't know the answers but i'm going to wait and see what you have to say the reason I call this message, please hold the line, is because the focus of my message, ladies and gentlemen, is about patience. And that's what I want to talk to us about today. Patience. Lord, why not this? Why not that? Patience. Lord, this person's going to win the election. Actually, let's just be patient and see. Lord, why is all of this going on? Patience. Patience. Please hold the line. I call it, please hold the line, because sometimes life is like a phone call when you've been put on hold. You have that initial conversation or message before you are told what? Please hold the line or please wait. And so you're waiting to be connected. You don't know when the line is going to go through, but you wait. In fact, sometimes you do other things whilst you're waiting, but you're still attentive to when the line might go through. So you stay prepared and ensure that you are in an environment that would still allow you to take the call without distractions or noise. And sometimes that's how it is with certain areas in our lives. We have to be patient as to when God is going to connect us to particular areas or things while still living our day-to-day -day life in a conducive and expectant manner. Sometimes I know we get frustrated waiting and we want to hang up, which would metaphorically in this instance represent giving up. You know what people are going to say. And I know you get frustrated when people tell you to pray because you've been praying. When they quote the scriptures that you know, you get frustrated when you're told to wait. God is going to come through. I understand, but let me encourage you this morning that, that even when you want to hang up, you just need to hold the line. Would someone say, please hold the line? What we're going to do right now is I'm going to give you an opportunity to get into smaller groups and answer a couple of questions in and around the topic that we're looking at this morning. I want you to remember this, that everything you are working on, listen to me, everything you are working on is for something you are working towards. What is that something? Is it liberating a person? Is it obtaining something? What is that something? And here's the second question I'm going to give you to discuss. How many of you, and I want you to be honest when you discuss it, expected to have or achieved some of those things by now? Whether it be things that you would believe in you would have purchased by now, maybe it might have been a spouse, maybe it might have been a child, I just want you to be honest, okay? We're talking about holding the line. We're talking about being patient. And so in a moment, 
I'm going to get you into groups. And this is what I want you to think about. Everything you are working on is for something you are working towards. What is that something? What are the things that you have set out to achieve? And how many of these things did you expect to have or achieved by now? Hopefully everyone understands the questions. Give me the thumbs up if you do. All right, fantastic. I'm going to give you about five minutes to discuss this and then we will be back to continue this morning. Thank you so much uh, for your feedback. Um, just thinking about those questions and that second question in particular, what have you ever wondered, uh, rather what have you expected to have achieved by now? Um, have you ever wondered, we're talking about patience, have you ever wondered on whose clocks you were expected to have had or achieved those things by now? Have you ever wondered? I'll give you an example. When I got engaged, people said to me, finally, about time. And I understood where they were coming from. I wasn't offended. I'm not offended. I totally get it. But did you know that the average age for marriage for a woman here in the UK is 37 and a half years old? Some of the women on here that are younger than that saying, I rebuke that, I'm not waiting that long, forget the average. All right? But listen to this. The average age for a man to get married in the UK is 38. And I am 37. I know I look 27, but I am 37. So, in fact, according to the national average, I'm actually on track. But to others, it's, hey, finally, it's, hey, about time. And I use that example to say we must be very careful. Please listen to me. We must be very careful on whose clocks we are living our own lives on. Okay? We must be very careful on whose clocks we are living our lives on. On because this can lead us to making rash decisions, being desperate, and losing patience just to please others, impress others, or even just as a result of giving in to the peer pressure of life and others. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 21, should you want to write that down? And I guess one of the guys will put it in the comments. Proverbs 20, 21 says, An inheritance gained hastily at the beginning will not be blessed at the end okay gained hastily will not be blessed at the end ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 says the race is not to the swift oftentimes i've come to realize that when we don't receive something when we want it or when we expected it it's usually because of timing or because god wants to build in us the qualities and characteristics that are invaluable for life but are only gained from patience or through patience listen to me god does not want us to arrive anywhere in life without learning the lessons and the frustrations along the way because anything that is gained without some form of suffering without a price a challenge or sacrifice depreciates in value this is why we will use particular things or eat certain things that we've paid for compared to those things that are free. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You will be in that restaurant and you will be full, but you're like, I'm finishing this meal. Why? Because I paid for it. But if you go to a party and there's hundreds of people and they're serving food and you've got some food on your plate and you're full, you just leave it. Why? Because you did not pay for it. We value what we pay for. And this is the difference between the believer who values Christ and the other who doesn't. One sees it as free so they don't give back of their time or financially. They don't serve or value things pertaining to God. Then there are others who value that actually it came at a cost in that of the price paid on the cross. Okay? And the Bible is full up 
with examples of people who had to be patient. Whether it was Abraham waiting for a child, whether it was the woman with the issue of blood who waited for 12 years, whether it was the man with an infirmity for 38 years. The Bible is full up of examples of people who had to be patient for various periods of time. David was anointed and went back to tending sheep. And most people don't even know, David was anointed three times. He had to go through a process of patience and dealing with King Saul. Joseph had to be patient, having a season in the prison before he could get to the palace. Paul, in his suffering, had to be patient to get a trial. He was being passed from pillar to post, from Felix to Justus to Augustus. He had to be patient. So as you await the things you are currently seeking God for, here are the questions you need to ask yourself should you be taking note. Am I exercising patience or doubt? Am I exercising patience or fear? And in case you're not aware, the meaning of patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, problems or suffering, and here's the key part to the meaning, without becoming annoyed or anxious. Most people think they're patients. Most people think they're walking in patience. Uh-uh. Patience isn't just the capacity to accept or tolerate delay or problems. It is the ability to do that. Okay, the ability to accept, tolerate delay, problems or suffering without, that's the key part, without becoming annoyed or anxious. And so what you need to be asking yourself rather is, what does God want me to learn in this season of life that I am in. Forget the season that we are in globally. Think about your personal season and ask yourself, what is it that God wants me to learn in this season? Because let me tell you this, oftentimes we miss what God wants us to learn and grow in because we're so focused on getting to the destination, getting through this trial. We're so focused on the end that we don't discern the lessons he wants us to learn along the way that build us up for where we're going. And so my question to you is, what areas of your life is patience building in you? Is it teaching you to be more honest? Is it teaching you to be more faithful? Is it teaching you to be more loyal? Is it teaching you to be more kind? Is it teaching you to be trustworthy? Is it teaching you humility? Is it teaching you compassion? Is it teaching you courage? Is it teaching you faith? Is it teaching you self-control? Is it teaching you discipline? Is it teaching you perseverance what is it that God would have you learn in this season of your life and what is it teaching you I'm going to put you back into groups for a few minutes and then we're going to come back and I'm going to close the sermon this morning and these next questions are what you're going to discuss in your groups this time round. so you might want to take note of them two questions what areas do you, you specifically, need to be more patient in? And I want you to be honest and open and transparent about it. And then the second question is, how are you going to attempt to achieve this? What areas do you need to be more patient in? And how are you going to attempt to achieve this? We're talking about patience. I'm going to give you a few minutes to discuss this in your groups and then we will come back and close the service together. I want to leave you with this scripture um, which I hope will encourage you and I'm going to paste it in the chat and it's James chapter 1 verses 2 to 3. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various, various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces favor. Is that what it says? Produces growth. Is that what it says? Produces patience. All of the testing that you're facing in this season of your life. Lord, this lockdown. Lord, this singleness. Lord, this challenge in my marriage. Lord, this challenge with my job. Lord, this challenge with being out of work. It's testing your faith which will lead 
to the ability to produce patience in your life. Would you take a moment wherever you are right now just to bow your heads and speak to God about those areas in your life where you need him to develop that patience within your heart. Would you just say, Lord, I've been frustrated with this area in my life, with that area in my life. I've been frustrated and not knowing the answers and I've been a control freak and I've wanted to know the whole picture. Lord, help me to develop patience, knowing that the testing leads to patience, that the patience ultimately will lead to the growth and the qualities and the characteristics that I need to be able to do the things that you have called me to do in Jesus' name.